Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Kay Cote. I'm your podcast host here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I have Joy Dean, founder of Extra Earrings on the show today. Um, we're going to be talking about her business, her journey to business ownership, challenges, and best practices, and really get a sneak peek into what it's like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop episodes like this one. Well, welcome, Joy, to the show. I'd love to learn a little bit about you and your business. Sure. Um, like you said, I'm Joy Dean. I started Extra Earrings about four years ago with my daughter, who was 15 at the time, oh, 14 at the time, I guess. Um, she had been making jewelry for her friends, and they had been buying them for like 2 and $3 at school, like uh, Littlest Pet Shop and clown heads and mini rubber chickens and just weird little things that, you know, I guess middle schoolers like, and then COVID happened and suddenly there was no more band and there was no more meeting with your friends for, for earrings or anything. And so she got kind of stagnant. Like I think a lot of our kids did, they didn't have a lot of activities. So I started encouraging her jewelry making more. And then uh, at that time she wanted to go to veterinarian school. And we started looking into it and about five minutes of research said, okay, we need to do something or you're going to be in debt forever. So we decided to make it official and start a business and kind of build that to pay for college expenses for the kids. Oh my goodness. I love that story. I like that. It's a family story and that it's encouraging her as a young person too, to like, this is how we can kind of pay for school. We can do things with this. So that is a really fun. I love that. It's a mother daughter story. Um, so I'd like to dive in kind of like, what is your role within the business? And is it a, are you and your daughter kind of co-founders? What's the structure of the business look like? At first she was just really making the jewelry. And then I was doing website creation, getting us into craft fairs, you know, taking those first initial steps to really test out the idea. Um, and then as it grew, she's learned more and more about project management. She actually doesn't want to be a veterinarian anymore. She wants to be a project manager, a producer. So she was able to see that she liked kind of operating the business. It helped her, you know, get her first job, made her a lot more experienced in life. Um, now there are four of us. Uh, her younger sister has joined in and has started making some of the jewelry. You know, they have to take photos. I'm a terrible photographer, so I'm super grateful for that. <laughs> but, um, you know, we just kind of dispersed the activity between all four of us. We also hired a social media manager recently uh, to kind of cover that gap and get us more business more regularly than just at like uh, cons and things like that. Oh, that's amazing. You've got like a whole, you've got like a team going. I really love that. And, um, you know, kind of like looking into what makes your business special. I mean, obviously you have the amazing family tie with it, but let's hear about the products. Like if I was walked into a room and, you know, was your ideal client, like what would, who is, who is it that you serve? Uh, we serve kind of a uh, fandom in general. We have anime, we have gaming, we have some cosplay things, things from TV and films. So uh, if somebody's super into Star Wars, we might have the things for them as well as, you know, popular animes like One Piece or Demon Slayer or games, Pac-Man and Mario, you know, as well as some of the newer ones. So just anything that I guess the family likes is kind of the test is we'll, you know, explore our own fandoms and then offer them to people as well. Uh, kind of the highlight of my day is when we go to one of these events and somebody may look into our space and say, okay, I like some of this. And then they find the one thing they really connect with and light up. It's just kind of amazing to see that connection. That is incredible. I think it's just so much fun, especially for your daughter and you to see that. And like, it really gets you close to your clients and, and again, gets that repeat business, which is super Absolutely. fun. So it sounds like you have a really unique business and, you know, I would love to hear, like, do you have any competitors right now? What's the competition like in this, in this industry? There's not a lot. And there's not a lot in terms of both like keyword management. Um, we've been rising in the polls by doing SEO um, simply mm -hmm. because there's not a lot for masters of the universe jewelry or something like that. You know? <laughs> um at the same time, we're starting to see more companies. Usually they offer clothing with it. And then you'll have like their, their jewelry section. Um, but it's usually not as diverse as ours. We try to keep under five items of any type at one time. 
So the likelihood of you finding your best friend in the same earrings, you know, is a lot less than it would be if we tried to mass produce. And it gives us more variety. We have probably 15 to 1700 unique items right now. That's really cool too, because it also kind of gives that um, you know, like you got to get the product while it's there. If you like it and love it, it's probably not going to be there next time. So grab it now. Not just that, but some of these are not exactly easy to find. So uh, for example, our God of War earrings, we got enough to make probably uh, four or five pairs, you know, right at our max, right before the game came out. And then mm -hmm. since the game came out, you know, months ago, I still cannot find a single one. So there's the likelihood, some of our items, if you don't get them, you will never see them again unless... In a year or two, they decided to make it months more. Oh, so where are you sourcing the, like the, I guess the characters or the, the main part of the jewelry? Uh, sometimes we're able to find supplies on Amazon and places like that. Some of the other times we're having to find them at more unique, uh, almost overseas places for mm -hmm. different kinds of gems and things, different characters that are printed. I have three or four main suppliers that I go to. But that doesn't mean they cover everything. You know, they all have their little unique items that I can look for there. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, what is one thing you wish more people knew about your business? I, I wish more people knew we were here. You know, we've met people at Comic-Cons. We've, we've grown our base a little. But getting the word out that we have unique items, especially when you consider the people with kids that might be into it. I know a lot of people that don't know a lot about the fandoms their kids are involved in. And so not knowing we're there combined with not knowing really the items exist, it keeps us super niche and, and kind of smaller. I wish we could get the word out to more people that we had cool items they might enjoy. Very, very true, which actually leads me perfectly into my questions about marketing. And so I'm always curious to what successful businesses are doing with their marketing. Mm -hmm. And are you looking at like putting, um, say, a budget together for from the sales that you make to put into marketing? What does that look like for you? We're really at that stage now. We've been around four years and we've been lucky. We've doubled our sales every year, but we didn't start off with a whole lot of money. We weren't really well funded. And so now that we're at the stage that we are, we were able to get like an LLC and organize a little bit more. We're trying to separate like personal and business finances. And we're also trying to take on more marketing efforts. Right now, most of it's in social media and we haven't done like a budget and everything for it, but that's definitely in our future. Awesome. That is good to know too. Uh, so social media, what kind, of, um, what kind of platforms do you prefer? What have you seen the most traction on? I had an easier lift off on Facebook, but when you start lifting off on Facebook, the people that see your post are your mom and your high school friends and some of the people that have loved you over the years, but may not be the most serious buyers, they're being supportive. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, it kind of flattened and plateaued. Uh, last year, we ran a promotion at DreamCon, our main event over the summer, that if you signed up for Instagram on the spot and showed me, you'd get 10% off. So we grew our Instagram by like 300. And that's probably where we're getting the most traction right now. We've also had a lot of business from Pinterest, which was super interesting oh, to me. Um, I could it, see you thriving on Pinterest. <laughs> it's something with how their algorithm works. Every time you tag it or post it on your feed, it creates another time the photo has been shared. So it's exponential in growth. There's hundreds of thousands of posts for us now on Pinterest. And yeah, we've seen a lot of business come from there, believe it or not. Oh, that is very cool. Um, so kind of like looking at how you're organizing your clients, do you have a CRM? Are you doing newsletter engagement? How are you interacting and organizing your client base? We have started a newsletter. Um, I usually run it before main events, like we'll run it right before we do DreamCon again in about a month or so or when we've made a major overhaul. One of our big initiatives is to make our jewelry fancier. So um, it's not that difficult to take a French hook and put a charm on it. So we started doing multiple charms. We started adding stones, um, just things to make them a little more special instead of you know just a plain charm earring. And so once we get that done, yeah, we'll do a newsletter, kind of announce it to everybody. We're also planning to start with drop dates that's something that's been really popular in both clothing and in jewelry that you know 
June 1st is the next time we're going to release anything. And we have a countdown on the site and we do all the marketing around. Be sure to join us June 1st to get your orders first, you know, before they run out. Um, that's probably the next step we're going to be taking with marketing. I dig that. I've been seeing a lot with drop dates too and in, in different industries. And I think that's such a great way to go because it creates that excitement about it your does. business. And if you know that the company only gets five of anything, then if you're not there when we open, there's a chance you may not get it if it's good, you know? True, true. That's, it's kind of like creates that scarcity, like that mm -hmm. need, you know, in, in your clients. Absolutely. So I'd love to dive in a little deeper. You know, you touched a bit on like, this is your daughter and you started this. You know, what really sparked you to kind of like go into this? Are you in it full time right now as mom too? Or are you um, I was laid off two weeks ago. So right now I'm full time. Uh, when I was working, it was a little more challenging. So we were putting, you know, 10, yeah. 15, 20 hours a week, what we could uh, afford, depending on what was going on that week. But now that I've been laid off, yeah, it's a full-time job for me. Um, how I got the idea, this is actually my third business. Um, I opened up one when I was like 23, 24 years old. Okay. I opened up a video rental store, VHS, in College Station, Texas in 1999. And DVDs came out in 2000. It was not a good idea. Uh, it had some fatal flaws that I didn't realize I hadn't gone to business school yet. So while I was there, I went and got my business associate's degree and it kind of changed the trajectory of my career to get business degrees instead of something else, you know. Um, when my kids were young, I opened it up at a consulting service that uh, worked. It did contracting with different businesses or it would help people get a job, improve interview skills, resume skills, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I did that because uh, my biggest priority is my kids. And while they were in school, I wanted to stay home with them until all three of them were, were in school. So um, the whole time they were little, they played around my feet as I would work on different things. And that one was a little more successful because it didn't require input. Like it was just consulting and things. The most you're ever going to do is market a little. Um, I was really looking for another business. I, I really enjoy them. It gives me a sense of independence. And so when I saw my daughter had talent, you know, I asked her if she wanted to kind of explore how far she could take that talent. That is really cool. I really, that's such a fun story. It's heartwarming. And it shows like you're, you know, you're like that you have that entrepreneurial spirit and you want to like bring that in with your family. So I think that's such a fun concept. It's, it's been great teaching them skills. That was kind of my, my plan was to teach them the things that I knew, help them get more successful, make it when they went to go look for a job, they had some skills that would help them get it. So um, that's been the most rewarding part for me is getting to share with them, you know, how to manage websites, how to build them a little bit of computer coding and things like that. They're not as keen on that as I am, but you know, there's time. <laughs> Very cool. Well, speaking of time, uh, where do you see the business going in the near future? Like maybe three to five years from now? Our main goal right now is to make the website, make as much money as our in-person stuff. So when they are in person, there's no doubt that people love it. They connect with it. They want to see more. But getting the website built to the point that we're, we're doing the duplicate business, like, you know, basically we double our profits because we're starting to make more on the regular on the business. That's our biggest goal. And then, you, you know, after that, too, after you're like thinking about your goals, planning these goals, I'd love to learn about your approach to goal setting. How many goals do you set at one time? Is Are you solely focused on, you know, growing the website? Is there other goals? Like, how do you navigate that space? So uh, after I was home with my kids, I became a teacher and learned a lot about uh, really human behavior and what the brain can handle, right? So for long-term goals, we only have three at a time. Um, either things that we really need to change or more, more long-term focused or, you know, kind of everything goes towards these goals. Mm -hmm. On any given week, I try to keep my to-do list at five or six things. But let's face it, smaller things, you end up adding them through the week and just, you know, taking care of little stuff too. But um, I took a really great course on Coursera recently that was like um, focused on growth mindset and goal setting. And mm -hmm. so... The biggest thing that I try to do is have uh, hold myself accountable to them. I'll review the goals and see, okay, what did I do today? What didn't I accomplish today? What happened to where I didn't accomplish it? Um, and then kind of carry that to the next day. So there's a, a sense of accountability and responsibility with reaching them, not just having an ongoing to-do list on paper. That's a really great 
that's a really great thing too. You know, you took the, you're like continuing that growth mindset and and educating yourself in, in the business. So that inspires me actually <laughs> a lot. Uh, so, you know, kind of like moving forward, you know, we've covered a ton of ground. This has been such a fun conversation so far. So I encourage everyone listening to this, you know, listen to this a couple of times too. There's a lot of great wisdom nuggets in here. And so now, Joy, I would like to go into our uh, kind of a rapid fire section. This is top of mind answers to four questions. Super fun. Are you ready for some rapid fire? Awesome. So our number one or our first question is, what is the key to success for you? Perseverance. Everybody's going to have moments that you hit a roadblock or you stumble a little where things don't go the way you planned. And it's at that moment you can either get some more information, take a class, read a book, talk to people, do something and refocus or your business will just kind of slow down. So as long as you persevere and learn, you'll be great. That's a great one. Um, what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Really, before you commit 100%, research what you're going to be doing and make sure you have the funding to do that one thing. When I opened up my video store, um, I basically was in a car wreck and got a check and I had said I wanted to do it, so I did it. And I didn't realize that if you buy a video for $10, you have to rent it four or five times to get your money back. It mm -hmm. set me up where I was always in a deficit. I didn't check it out. Months later, I decided to sell things for like dorm rooms. That stuff did great. And I, and I was able to, you know, make my money back in some way. But earrings have a great uh, profit for it. You know, the, the cost you put into it is a lot less than the cost that you get. So compared to the video store, it's just a safer bet all around. You don't have a lot to get started and then you can build it. I would never have been able to do that back then. So yeah, mm -hmm. check out what you're doing, think through it, get some evaluations, make sure that your plan's solid before you spend too much. Mm, that is really true. What is one book or piece of content, could be a podcast, anything that you've recently taken in? I took a class on Coursera that is Agile Leadership Trainings. So Agile is the ability to respond to change as it happens and be able to fit it and make those decisions based on what's going on now, not six months from now, or being really slow to take the change. Mm -hmm. um, it had uh, unexpectedly some of the mind work, some of your thought work. So you were able to think through and, and learn your changes yourself before you applied them to a business. And between the two parts, I found it really, really valuable. Wonderful. And our final question is, if you had to choose only one area of your business that you could improve on tomorrow, what would it be? Marketing. Absolutely. Um, I don't understand it as much as operations. All of my jobs have kind of been focused once I got out of teaching, even before like business analysis, how to improve things, how to be more profitable. I never took classes in marketing. And so I don't get it quite as much and how to get the results. That'd be something I'll probably study in the near future. Wonderful. Well, let's start marketing you now. How can people get in touch with you? Feel free to share your social media any way we can get in touch with you. Absolutely. We are Extra Earrings at ExtraEarrings.com. Um, it does have the E, so E-X-T-R-A. Um, and uh, my uh, Facebook is uh, Extra Earrings. Uh, Instagram is Extra Earrings 2-3. Uh, Extra Earrings was taken, so we had to add a couple of numbers. Those are the easiest ways to get in touch with me and see our merchandise. Awesome, Joy. Well, this has been such a great conversation. And for our final question today, what is most inspiring to you today? Uh, my kids. They're, they're always inspiring for me. I can just see their potential. Uh, I think they can achieve anything they want to. Pretty much every decision I make centers around them. That is powerful. Well, thank you so much, Joy. It's been, it's been a joy to have you on the show today. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is this has been a pleasure. And, um, you know, I think that what you guys are doing is great trying to, you know, help small businesses get off their feet and find out, you know, have more people find out about them. Thank you for including me. Always.